three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show. And I've got somebody I've interviewed, interviewed before, and his name is Rocky. You there, Rocky? I am here. Thank you so much for having me back again. Last name is Lalvani, right? That is correct. Good the job. L, the L is kind of like silent almost. It just kind of rolls up. Lalvani. Because it's Italian, right? It's actually from India. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't it is. know that. Yeah. I know. It fools a lot of people. It fooled me. You know, the I and I is like, I thought it might be Houdini or something like that. <laughs> it does. So for those that don't know, Rocky is a CPO, which stands for Chief, and you would say probation officer, but it's not. It's profitability officer, right? Absolutely. It's amazing how people don't look at profit. <laughs> no, I think I shared with you um, last time we had a conversation. I was, I was working with a guy down in California. He did a lot of martial arts events. And we were looking at his spreadsheets once, and there wasn't a line item for him getting paid. He's wondering why wow. he never makes any money. He doesn't have a line item for his salary. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, people, you, you, you don't really think it through because you just think, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to save. I'm going to make a profit margin in there, and I'll keep that. But it doesn't work that way, does it? <laughs> no, not unless you take it off the top. Like, the way we do stuff is sales minus profit equals expenses. So we take our profit first, and then you can spend. Not spend and see what crumbs are left over for you. That's right. That's what residual. I don't like that term residual income because that means leftover income. I don't leftover. want leftovers. <laughs> uh, you're the owner, right? Should you not come first? Should you not be in like, cause who else is going to put your money first? Nobody else is going, yeah, I want to make sure magic Brad gets paid. Let me pay him first. No, it doesn't work that way. It and even doesn't. if you're, you know, owner operator by yourself, you forget. You know, like I shared before, I've got a lot of stuff that's um, it's automated, so it, it does it by itself where I don't get involved and my emotions can't, you know, say, wait, maybe I shouldn't spend that. I shouldn't invent vest now because I got bills to pay. The bill collectors can wait. I got to eat. <laughs> that is correct. You do have to eat. Well, what got you on this track of um, profiting, say, you know, profits first? What got you on I, I have always been a money person. Like ever since I was a kid, I'd read the Wall Street Journal. You know, Ooh. I had a goal of being a millionaire. And so I was always just reading, learning about money. And then when I got out of college with my first job, I just started automating my savings. So essentially I was paying myself first. The right. moment, even before the paycheck hit, it took a bunch of money out and put it in places. And then even after the paycheck hit, it took more money out and hit it in places. And so little by little, I just kept upping the amounts and my money would get hidden from me and you build wealth magically. That's pretty wise. I wish I had my, my parents. I wish they would have kind of got me into that kind of thing. Cause you know, when I was young, I, my, my first, I was doing magic as an income, which, which mm -hmm. is a starving artist wages, I guess. But then when I got a job job out of high school, I worked for three years for the county parks and I spent it on alcohol and cars and women and what a waste. <laughs> I, I did the same in high school. It wasn't until I got out of college that I really started saving. So I okay. enjoyed those years. <laughs> you learned, learned early. <laughs> learned early. Yeah. And it, it's the same system. So I've always sat around just trying to figure out why do people struggle with money? Like just don't want to make the system do it and it works. You get, you build wealth. And I found out that people have a lot of hangups with money. We don't talk about money. And I realized they don't teach about money in school. And so, you know, when I started to think about what do I want to do and how can I help people, that just seemed like the logical answer. And then it was figuring out how does that work? The problem is people aren't like I can make you, you send me a kid who's in their 20s. I can lay out a plan that they'll guarantee to be a millionaire. They won't pay for it. They won't listen. So it's like, okay, who will listen? Well, business owners listen because bottom line is important to them and they're willing to pay to 
get those services. And so it's the perfect mix. And the problem is for a business owner, it's real easy to know what your revenue is. We all focus on that top line vanity number, which is your revenue, which is wonderful, but it's really hard to figure out what your profit is. Most of business owners don't find out till the end of the year when their taxes are done. Mm -hmm. And even otherwise, they don't know where the profit is coming from in their business. So if they've got multiple products or services, one of them might be much more profitable than the rest. But if they don't realize that, they focus their time and intention on the wrong parts of the business. And there's a lot of businesses that have unprofitable activities in it. And if you're focusing and, and scaling unprofitable activities, you're, you're never going to make money because it's inherently unprofitable to begin with. And that's the problem. Yeah, it, it's a pretty interesting thing. I mean, when you look at the employee, they've got a paycheck. They know how much it is so they can budget for it, but they end up going buying that car and they think, you know what, I could kind of afford this one, this little better one. And it's uh, right down the rabbit hole, right? It goes right there. Yeah. The, the car dealership doesn't care about your budget, right? They're not, they're like, hey, what's the maximum approval I can get for you? That's all they care about. Then I can sell you the maximum car. The, the guy writing the loan doesn't care. He's like, what's the maximum loan? The more money in my pocket, right? Your boss is going, hey, if you buy that car, uh, you're going to have to show up at work and work a little harder. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now you're under stress. So he's like, buy the car. Everyone's telling you to buy the car because everyone else is making money. But you because you deserve it because you deserve it. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, you deserve it. <laughs> well, that, it's, what do you think it is with the human mind? Because I remember I was struggling and I was having issues out lot in California, kind of homeless. And I would go to the coffee shop and I buy the dollar fifty coffee and I would put the the, the chocolate and the creamer in it and I'd make myself a big mocha because I would, didn't have any money. So I, but then when I started making money again, it's off to Starbucks and pay six bucks. What is it that makes a person do that? Why wouldn't I kind of keep it small? Uh, you know what? I think some of that is your underlying money beliefs. What are your money scripts? Like if I go back to your childhood what are the stories that you know about money? What were you told and what do you believe? Well, I learned that it doesn't grow on trees. Okay, so it doesn't grow on trees. Did anyone ever tell you about saving it, investing it? Uh, nope, it was more about, you know, clean your plate because we paid for it and it was, we don't have enough. It was a scarcity kind of mindset. So now you have a scarcity mindset as an adult with regards to money. You don't have that abundant mindset. I definitely so, struggle through that even, even I'm 63 now and I've been through a lot of abundance mindset kind of stuff, but I still see the, feel the little subconscious stuff come in. Like I remember, uh, you know, I open up a paper clip cause you got to clean something with the end of the paper clip. And then you, I bent it back cause I didn't want to waste the paper clip. Right. That's bad mindset. It's just a paper clip. <laughs> It is just a paperclip, but it's also the mindset of not overspending. Mm -hmm. But somehow that didn't translate to your coffee purchases. No, once I started having the money, I thought, hey, what the heck? It's no big deal. I got it in my pocket. Let's spend it. And I probably should have went. Uh... So that comes down to Parkinson's law. And Parkinson's law basically states that the amount you, you will use up the amount of resources given to you. So if you've got a full bank account, you'll spend it. And that goes for business owners and people. So the less you give yourself in a bank account, the less you'll spend. And so the way to fix it is to fix the bank account and hide it from yourself up front. Then you don't feel like spending so much. Where so comes the pay yourself first kind of thing, profitability first. Correct. Pay yourself first. Same thing. You know, it's that same concept for time. If you've got three weeks to do something, it'll take you three weeks, but you'll procrastinate for the first 19 days. I can see your book behind it. it says profit yeah. first. There's your book right there. Profit first. Yeah. <laughs> and that book in the 12 week year, they're both off of the same principles of Parkinson's law. The 12 week year says you can get more done in 12 weeks than most people in a year. And the reason is most people set a goal in January and then they forget about it until like November when they go, oh, we got to hit our goals, right? Companies do the same thing. We got to hit our targets now. All of a sudden they start pushing and, you know, pulling and getting everything done for end of year. You had 11 months to do it. You 
goofed off. So when you're um, talking with people, do you primarily talk to the individual or you talk more, you're, you're more businesses? I, I right now strictly deal with business owners. So I work with business owners who generally are between half a million and 5 million in revenue. So they know how to generate money. They can afford services, yet they're not big enough that they have somebody in that position full-time within their own company. As you grow to become a large company, you're going to have all those different seats filled. I deal with the business owner who kind of has to wear every hat. And the money he had is not one that he's great with or she's great with. And having somebody there to hold them accountable, keep them on, you know, on task, and also to make sure that they're making the right financial decisions is what I do. I, I help to get rid of the shiny object syndrome. And I also mm -hmm. get to play bad guy for them. No, you can't spend that. Well, tell the guy that your financial guy said we can't afford it. And so it takes the pressure off of them, right? I give them permission to say no and not okay. take the blame. So the, the principles for the business owner and the employee individual is the same kind of thing, but you're, you mm -hmm. work primarily with the businesses. And uh, I had a thought that came in and came in and went one of those things it just <laughs> popped in and just disappeared. But it was, uh, it was about, uh, that, that profitability of the company, they know how much they're going to be, it's going to be coming in and they just need to be disciplined enough to do what's told. And uh, so you come in and kind of, kind of basically coach that person that it's okay to put something aside. Yeah. So we set up systems. So what we do up front is as soon as the money comes in, we immediately put aside money for taxes because you owe the government. It's not your money. Why do you act like it is? We put aside money for your pay and we put aside money for profit up front. All of that gets handled. If you've got some large things that need to like, you know, if you're in a, the type of a company that you need to constantly be buying equipment every year or make large purchases, we'll put money aside for your large purchases. So when it comes time to make the large purchase, you just stroke a check. And yeah, it's, you're it's sort done. Of, uh, you're sort of predicting the future. I mean, it's kind of a mm -hmm. no brainer that you're going to have to repair things and you're going to have to do payroll and you're going to have to pay taxes. So you're yeah. right. Why not set it aside? And when all that stuff's set aside, you can look at, holy smokes, we're charging this much for this widget. We better be charging this much. Correct. And that's a lot of what I do. I help them look at their profit margins on products, on services to say, where should you focus your time and energy? Where is the most profitable product or service in your business and sure. that's where you put your time i've seen some of that stuff on like shark tank where they're up there doing their pitch and stuff and all of a sudden the sharks go have you thought about this and all of a sudden they kind of go like you mean i can't make any money with this great idea <laughs> no most people have no like if if they're starting up they have no clue of what the costs are and if you've got a bunch of employees i mean the reality is employees are trained to spend money so they'll blow your money faster than you can imagine. Well, they got Unless a budget. They got a budget, right? So they'll spend it. And, and that happens in corporate like crazy. Oh, if we don't spend our budget, you know, we're going to get in trouble or we won't get money next year. So they're just blowing money for the sake of blowing money. And that's I why we're it. in trouble. It was big in the event industry. I remember going to these convention center events and they're, you know, you rent a table. Table rentals, a hundred bucks. They go, oh, put three of them over there. That's $300 you spent just like mm -hmm. that. And uh, they, don't, they don't watch that because it's just a table. Just put it over there. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. When the stuff yeah. is outside of your, your thinking, it's really easy just to let it go. And it's almost like poking a hole in the bucket, you know, and the water just flows out. It does. Yeah. You really have to plug all the holes because it's like it's trying to fill a colander with water. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say keeping an eye on some of those automated um, monthly expenses. Oh, like yeah. We we're talking about StreamYard. That's an, yep. that's an expense. It, it is. Yeah, it's only 20 bucks a month, but yeah. keep in mind that 20 bucks a month. <laughs> it's 20 bucks a month and you've probably got 10 of them now. You're at 200 bucks a month, right? Yeah, and and some of them aren't 20 is cheap. A lot of these are 80, 100, 300, 500. Sure. You know, I've got some clients that, and same thing with ad spends, you know, thousands of dollars in Google ads, thousands of dollars in Facebook. And 
a lot of times you're not even getting a return. So my one client, we looked at his Google spends and I'm like, why are you doing that? He's like, well, here's some good reasons. I go, okay, what if we spent less? And he's like, oh, look, Google says that if I spend 35% less, I will still get 98% of the benefit. Mm -hmm. That's just money thrown out for no reason, right? Who cares about 2% when you, you're investing 35? That's the optimization of that advertising. Is it in the right spot? Like I had a, someone that uh, they were advertising on the radio, mm -hmm. putting a lot of money on the radio, and they could have been putting stuff into something that's more direct response kind of stuff because tough severe while you're driving down the road, people don't listen to that stuff much. <laughs> no, and you don't even know where the, whether they did or didn't. You have no way to measure it. I mean, that's wonderful if you're Coca-Cola, but for a small business owner, it's a big spend and you may or may not get return. Yeah. And so it's, it's always measuring and always being clear. Somebody has to focus on your money. And if it's not you and you don't have somebody in your business doing it, that's a problem. And bookkeepers and accountants are great transactionally, but they're not focused on profitability. Like right. that's not their skill set. And there's very few people out there who say, I'm going to focus on profit because that's what matters, the bottom line. So on your website or in your book, do you have like a, uh, like a checklist or something of all the different things that maybe you are wasting money on? I don't have a checklist. So the book that you see is Mike McAllowitz. He He's the one who wrote Profit First, and I am connected with him. Um, and he certified me to teach the system. What we tell you to do in the book is go through your bank statement and for every line item, ask yourself, did this bring, was this directly related to driving revenue, right? So let's take the magic store. If, if I run a magic store, I have to buy magic tricks to sell them, right? So that's directly related to my revenue. If I don't have magic tricks, I can't, got nothing to sell. So that's a good expense, right? Now, what's a bigger expense? Well, I need a store, right? I need a place to sell them. So the question then is, can we reduce the cost of rent? Is there a way to do this less expensively? And right. it's a balancing act, right? You know, are you paying appropriately for your rent? Um, you might have to pay for some different software and, you know, accounting systems. Are you paying appropriately? And then there's, hey, you know what would be really cool if we did this big blow up thing outside? Let's go spend money on that because that's neat. Well, is it actually driving revenue? Did anyone walk in your store because of the big blow up thing outside or not? And if the answer is no, then why are you spending money on it? You know, for a lot of people, it's the fancy office, it's the, the fancy car, um, or, you know, sometimes they're paying for these services that they forgot about, right? Well, we signed up for StreamYard, we were going to use it, haven't used it in two years, but I'm still yeah. paying for it. You know, so this is, a, this is sort of off the topic, it's more on a marketing mindset, but you mentioned the, the blow up thing outside. You ever heard about the big blue balloon story, as in guerrilla marketing? It's a pretty uh, interesting story. I'll tell it real quick, but there was a furniture dealer that was trying to get more business. So they went and they spent a whole bunch of money on advertising on the radio and the TV and newspaper, magazines, paid circulars. And then they're going to get this big inflatable balloon and have the big blue balloon sale. And about a couple of days before the big sale, this competitor across the street went and rented a bigger blue balloon and put it on his roof. <laughs> so use, use other people's money that's correct so the guy across the street was really smart yeah right <laughs> and and that's what that's what business owners need to be you you don't need more revenue you need to be more resourceful so it's not don't don't go spending your way to a solution think your way to a solution the guy across the street thought his way to a solution. And for a fraction of the cost, he got it all. You know, he took advantage of the other guy's advertising. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And there's plenty of opportunities to do that. There's plenty um, of there ways. There definitely to are. I mean, um, I do some, like with this video, this will go up on YouTube. 
And what I do when I do this stuff is I kind of look at who else is advertising and, and promoting certain things and use that same keyword because they're doing the advertising and spending the money on Google to get that video to be seen. I'm just taking advantage of it. And now this video will be next to that video because people typed in those words. So do you use TubeBuddy? Um, I don't use the paid version, but I do use TubeBuddy. Okay. All right. <laughs> Finding the, the, the words, right? So that's smart, right? You're using the service without paying for it. You're being resourceful. I'm, I'm actually, what I do is I actually go into Google and I'll just start typing something or into YouTube and I'll type something in there and I'll look and see what shows up. Next to it. Yep. And I'll say, okay, that's a, a word that's popular and that's what's trending right now. And, you know, there might be something like, like right now, um, political advertising. How much is spent on political advertising? That might oh. be a key word. And I use that and then it would show up. <laughs> So it's optimization, just being savvy with stuff. But uh, back to what you're talking about, I think it's really important that people need to, like you said, go through their, their bank account and check off everything. Do you recommend doing that once a month or quarterly or? I don't think you need to do it once a month. Um, quarterly is fine because some of your expenses are some of your expenses are yearly but i think you should get in the habit of doing that um actually once a month you should at least make sure that everything jives like just quickly glancing down at every transaction just to make sure you're not getting uh cheated or that you know there's something going on like just that stuff happens a lot with i remember or, or even things that you don't even think about because I was using a service that was headquartered in the United States, but another division was over in, I think, over in Europe somewhere. Now there's an international processing fee that goes with that, and it's a mm. percentage. So if I'm buying something for like 300 bucks and it's only 3%, that's fairly significant. <laughs> it is. It adds up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you need to, a processing system to, to review your numbers on a fairly regular basis. Question is how deep a dive? Quarterly deep dives are good. Monthly, just at least eyeball everything. Mm -hmm. Make sure that it's all what you expected. Very cool. Well, this is fun talking about this kind of stuff because like you'd mentioned money is kind of, to, to me, if you, I mean, to get deep with it, money is a byproduct of energy. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, the, it's the energy that I put out as a person I put the energy out and that's my energy. That's why I think it's hard to talk about money because it's really personal. You know, I put time and money and thought into this, converting right. it into money. And it's, it's tough for someone to say, so how much do you make per year? It's like none of your damn business. <laughs> you know, it's funny that people will talk more about their sex lives than their, their financial lives. <laughs> that's right. It's just the reality of it. Um, and I think that's more of an American thing being taboo. I think other cultures are less taboo. Really? Because we're yeah. such a capitalist country? Um, I think there's some old values that are, you know, you don't talk about money. And I, I don't know where they came from or how they came to be. But if you think about it, if you're a marketer, the less people think about money, the better off you are. <laughs> And so I think it, it, it just may be cultural from that standpoint, because our schools don't teach us money, which no. is absurd. It's, it's very strange. Like I said, I just wish when I was young, you know, dad would have told me to tuck a buck a day away. Yeah. <laughs> money, money is pretty simple when you understand it. It's just numbers. It's just numbers. And the problem is we put too much emotions on it. Exactly. And that's where the problems come in is all the emotions on the money instead of just knowing the numbers. And the, the other thing is a lot of people are not numbers people. And so if you're not a numbers person, you're going to have to get somebody to help you. Well, an example is I've got some software that I actually pay for per month and I'm not using it. So why am I doing that? The reason isn't logical. It's emotional because I might use it someday. Mm -hmm. I'd probably be better off just cutting it off and- mm -hmm. When you need it, pay for it. Do it when I need it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And 
how many times are you doing that? I don't. It just sits there every month and sucks it on my bank account. Now you got me thinking. I got to go do some analysis. Yeah. Well, but I mean, how many other things do you have that you forgot about that are doing that every month? Oh, totally. That's what I was saying. You got to yeah. check that account once in a while. And sometimes things come in that you don't understand what it is. And it's, it's digital now. You, know, you don't have a receipt or anything with a logo on it. It's just a little code or something. And you wonder, what is that all about? Look yeah, at it, it is not hard to spend money in two digits. A lot of two digit transactions add up very quickly to thousands of dollars. <laughs> very, very quickly. And well, pay attention. Of, speaking of numbers, we're, uh, what are we going for? We almost, we almost went for half an hour here, Rocky. Yeah. Woo it's an exciting subject. It's a very interesting subject because like you said, it's, it's a boring thing because it's just numbers. But it's very intriguing of like, like just the value of a dollar. And I've said it before, what's more valuable, a hundred dollar bill or a glass of water? It depends on where you are, because it'll change. You know, if you're in the desert, I want the water. And the mm -hmm. hundred dollar bill is, has no value. So, well, Rocky, I appreciate you taking the time. It's very intriguing talking with you about this stuff and come, you're very, uh, I can tell you're very into it. <laughs> I am. It's. it's <laughs> I, it's in my blood. It's what I do. Money in your blood. Ching. Okay. <laughs> okay, Rocky, appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to sign this off. If you want to stay on, we'll have another chat. But other than that, I'm going to shut this one off and beam it up to the universe. Let people find it. Appreciate cool. you taking the time. Thank you.